In this video, we will review the structure and features of the lessons and units in Code.org's Computer Science Discoveries course. Before we get started, it is important to understand that there are two websites that serve as important resources for you. The first is the CSD curriculum website, where you will find resources for planning and teaching the course. The second is Code Studio, which is the environment in which students will experience the course. This is also the default view for teachers to manage your classes and students. When you log into your teacher account at Code.org, you are taken to the My Dashboard section of Code Studio. If you have already created sections for your students, you will see them at the top of your dashboard. Once you have created a section for CS Discoveries, to navigate to the curriculum resources from Code Studio, you can click on the Computer Science Discoveries link in the course column, or scroll down and click the CS Discoveries tile on your dashboard. This will take you to the course overview page within Code Studio. While viewing units in Code Studio, you will have a teacher panel that appears on the right. This tool will help you navigate your classes and monitor student progress. You can also click Student to see exactly what the students are seeing, which is especially important if you are hiding units to prevent students from moving ahead. To access the overview pages and the CSD curriculum website, where you will find resources for planning and teaching the course, go back to the Course Overview page and click the Curriculum button at the top of the Course Overview page, or go to curriculum.code.org and select CS Discoveries. On the left of the page, you will see the curriculum guide, also referred to as the Teal Book. Scrolling through this guide gives you lots of good information about the course and its features. The page numbers in the table of contents are clickable for quick access to information. For example, if you want to know more about assessment and feedback, simply click the link in the table of contents and you will automatically be taken to the corresponding page in the guide document. Throughout the curriculum website, you will see a purple navigation bar at the top. Links in this navigation bar are relative to the level of course you are currently viewing. So on this course overview page, Clicking Vocab provides a list of all the vocabulary terms in the entire course. Links to the Unit Overview pages are available on the right. Let's take a look at Unit 2. This is the Unit Overview page. A short overview of the content and goals is provided at the top, along with a pacing calendar that shows the relative size, or length of each lesson, and a suggestion of what you might be able to get through in a week. As you scroll, you'll notice that every unit is a story that is broken into chapters. Each chapter is a collection of lessons. The chapter commentary section explains the story of the chapter. This page provides a week-by-week -week listing of every lesson with a brief summary and links to the full lesson plans as well as direct links to lesson resources like videos, handouts, and guides. Take a look at the purple navigation bar at the top. There are unit focus links available here. If you click vocab this time, it only provides the vocabulary terms for this unit. Additional types of resources are available in this navigation bar. Now let's dig a little deeper and explore a lesson overview page. Click a bubble at the top of this page to navigate to a lesson in this unit. Note that you can return to the unit overview page at any time by clicking on the big green unit number from any lesson plan or by clicking on the unit overview link in the purple link bar. Every lesson plan has a common structure that should make it easy to find what you need. Planning for a lesson starts by looking at the overview, then reviewing the core activity to get a deeper sense of what it is and how long it might take. The overview explains what students will do in this lesson, and the purpose explains why the lesson is important. There is also a hyperlinked agenda for quick navigation within the lesson. To the right, you'll see the info and resources available for this lesson. Lesson objectives are listed as students will be able to statements. Be sure to review the preparation needs as some lessons require materials. Links are the main repository for lesson resources, activity sheets, handouts, videos, etc. Vocabulary lists new terms introduced or referenced in the lesson, and introduced code provides snippets of code introduced and used in the activity. Other supports for the lesson, such as links to professional learning modules and the teacher forum, can be found under support. Scroll down to the teaching guide. There's a short warm-up activity to get the lesson started. The purple icon next to Discuss correlates to the content in the purple Discussion Goal callout box. The Discussion Goal callouts provide guidance to help you direct discussion, keep things on track, and hit the main points. Next up is the activity. The main activity works toward the objectives. The format varies widely depending on the type of lesson. This activity has students working in Code Studio. Next to display, we see another icon that correlates to the orange callout box, teaching tip. The teaching tip callouts include pedagogical suggestions or information that might affect your instruction. The interactive Code Studio view allows you to quickly browse through what students see for each level in the lesson without having to actually go through the Code Studio website and step through each level on Code Studio. This should greatly speed up your preparations for class or serve as a quick way to remind yourself what's in each lesson. 
The first level, Lesson Overview, which you may have students read within Code Studio, indicates that it is a programming level. Programming levels are a type of activity level that include a code.org programming environment like WebLab, GameLab, or AppLab. An instructions panel in the second level explains any new content introduced in the level and provides a checklist of tasks to complete. Starter code may be provided. You can review your student's code from the teacher panel. For more information on other types of activity levels, please view the activity levels page in the curriculum guide. The second level, Intro to Web Lab, has the video icon, which indicates it is a video level, a type of concept level that contains a video to be used in the curriculum. Videos typically are hosted in multiple formats, including a downloadable file, to increase the likelihood of compatibility in a variety of classrooms. For more information on other types of concept levels, please view the concept levels page in the curriculum guide. Numbered levels are typically a sequence of exercises, while named levels typically provide overview of content. Clicking on a numbered level shows you the student instructions. You may also see additional teaching commentary pertinent to this level specifically in the same view. If you want to try the level, click View on Code Studio in the top right. Next is the wrap-up, which brings closure to the lesson. It's typically a sense-making activity or discussion. Throughout the lessons, icons are intended to give context about what mode you should be operating in for each part of the lesson. Sometimes you speak directly to students, and other times you need to understand the goal of a discussion or give guidance during an activity. For example, next to the Remarks section is a gray microphone with a gray bar extending beneath it. This combination denotes language or remarks intended for direct instruction. You can read aloud or paraphrase. At the end of this lesson, we have some extra information, in this case, standards alignment. Other lessons may also have extension activities or an assessment.